Well, welcome to tonight's Yen class. Um, if we haven't met before, uh, my name is Kim and Tails is making his way over. He will probably be joining us here and there throughout the class as a co-teacher and extra weights during Shavasana. And so go ahead and find yourself wherever you are in a comfortable position that can be a seat or lying down. Um, and we'll spend about five minutes or so just in an opening meditation. I'll give us a visualization just to kind of arrive here. Um, we've all been doing something before this and we will be doing something after this. And so I like to spend the first five minutes just really getting us here. And so whatever position you're in, just move around, fidget in any way and get yourself into a place that you can feel like you can be for five minutes or so. Um, and don't worry about keeping track of time tonight. Um, I'll do all of that for you, but find yourself in a position and begin to take the next three or so breaths just to begin to notice what parts of your body feel crunchy or stiff or loose or tight or painful, the parts that don't feel as great as they might in an hour. Just notice those, feel into those and take note. Don't ask anything to change. Just notice what might need some more attention tonight or less attention. And through those breaths, just begin to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you and begin to just visualize where those places are in your body and imagine that if possible, you could breathe all the way down and that your breath could just release any tension that's there. And so beginning to take deeper inhales through your nose and exhales out your mouth. If you would like to count your breath, you might want to inhale to a count of four or five and exhale to a count of five or six. But if that causes you to get too much into focusing and you prefer to just be here, just breathe naturally as you are. Your body might consciously begin to breathe more deeply as you begin to focus on it. And then on your next few breaths, begin to notice parts of your body that are feeling maybe especially good right now. Maybe you did something else with your body today, a different type of exercise or a different type of movement. And you notice a part of your body that just feels really stretched out or really great, or maybe it's just a favorite body part that you have. If you've been doing exercise, you might've been noticing some changes and you're just really noticing that part of your body. If you don't have anything in that category, don't worry. Just a moment to celebrate yourself if that's something that you're working towards. And then coming back to your breath and focusing on that. If you haven't tried counting your breath, just try it one or two times, inhaling to a count of four or five. Maybe filling up your belly as deeply as you can as if there was a balloon there. And then slowly exhaling to a count of five or six. And with your eyes closed, imagine your absolute favorite place in nature. It can be a real place that you've been to, or it can be somewhere that you imagine that you would love to travel to maybe this summer. And imagine that you are there in whatever position you're in right now, if that's safe to do so. And just spend the next minute or so just imagining yourself sitting or lying in your favorite place in nature, thinking about what it is that you love about that place or just in your mind, just imagining what you love about it. Maybe you notice a smile creep on your face, with your eyes closed as you take this imaginary vacation. And anytime tonight through any of the poses that we do, if they become a little bit more challenging than you were expecting. Just imagine that you can travel back to this place, do whatever pose that we're in, and just be in your favorite place in your mind and your imagination. As a child, many of us often had maybe wild imaginations and we would come up with stories or places or tell stories about places we had been over and over and over again as if they had just happened. And we can still do that as adults. We just sometimes forget that. And so tonight, as we're going through poses, I want you to use your imagination and use your breath to just imagine that you are in your absolute favorite nature place. 
And if that's a place that you've been before, cool. If it's not a place that you've been and it's a place that you hope to go, just use this as a tool and a way to just look forward to the day that you get to arrive there. Or if you want to come up with something completely random, maybe a Dr. Seuss-like place, just use the fun of your imagination and the magic of your breath to travel somewhere for the next hour or so, pose by pose, and just spend this time with yourself, with family, if you have family joining you, and just be in that place together. And so take three more breaths in your body, inhaling and exhaling through your nose. And on your third breath, we're gonna do a few rounds of neck stretches just to loosen up our shoulders, loosen up our neck before we move into our first pose. So go ahead and drop one ear to one shoulder. You can choose which ear goes to which side first. I'm gonna be dropping my right ear to my right shoulder. And you can have your eyes open or closed, but just notice what this feels like on the left side of your neck. If you want to change how this feels, you might want to stretch your arm out to the side or maybe down to the mat creating somewhat of a triangle and notice what it feels like to rotate your palm to the ceiling or down to the mat or to the wall behind you. And just spend five breaths here. You can also change this by looking down at your shoulder or up to the ceiling. Both of those shift and adjust. Maybe when your neck needs more one than the other. And then when you feel complete, go ahead and just look down at your shoulder, drop your chin and move your chin to the center of your chest so that you're looking basically straight down or maybe almost down to your belly button. Spend a couple breaths here, stretching out the back of your neck with your head dangling, really trying not to hold it up at all and just let it hang. Maybe swaying side to side if you feel like that helps you settle in more. And then when you feel complete in that, just continue tracing your chin across your chest so that you drop your opposite ear. I mean, it's my left ear, it's my left shoulder. And then again, you can play around with your arm out to the side or down at your side, rotating your palm. And just notice if one side feels different than the other. In yin practice, we do a lot of two-sided poses and it can be natural to expect that our body might look the same so it feels the same internally, but Nine times out of 10, that's not true. So don't judge that in yourself. Just notice what's different and take what you need. Just breathing here in and out through your nose. And then on your next breath, inhale and bring your head up to neutral. And just look one side to each other, one side to the other, left to the right, right to left. Just rotating your neck side to side. Just noticing how many different muscles and how many different sensations exist in our neck. Hold it up all day. So tonight, really focus on releasing and relaxing your neck in each pose so that you can release and relax tension in your shoulders. And so we're gonna move into our first pose which will be toes pose. And so what we'll do is go ahead and come onto your hands and knees. And you can flow through a cat cow or two if you would like to, if you want some spinal movement early on. To do that, you would just drop your belly, lift your head up to the sky, and then press your hands into the mat, arch your spine up to the sky. And then once you're on your hands and knees in a neutral position, go ahead and tuck your toes underneath you. You can add a blanket under your knees if that's comfortable for you. Tuck your toes underneath yourself and then go ahead and just sit your seat bones back onto your heels. You can leave your hands on the mat for a moment and then begin to walk your hands towards you, walking them onto your knees and then coming as much to an upright spine as feels okay for you tonight. That might be in no way at all upright. You might just keep your hands on the mat and that's okay. Any version of these poses is the pose. The pose is 
taking an hour to practice moving your body in different ways than you have throughout the day. So coming into toes pose, coming right into probably the most sensational pose that we'll be in tonight. And just making sure that your toes are tucked underneath you. If you'd like to add a blanket between your sit bones and your heels, that can sometimes be good. But just come back to your breath. Maybe close your eyes and come back to that happy place. Or just focus on your breath, inhaling and exhaling. And another invitation tonight, when you are in an exceptionally sensational pose or moving in a way that you feel like your body needs, but you aren't ready for that, is to think about a really strong emotion that you felt sometime within the last week that was a little bit uncomfortable or unexpected or even overwhelming. And notice the fact that you made it through that, whatever it was, you made it through somehow, some type of way, because you made it here. And you'll make it through this, but ask yourself what it was maybe about that super strong emotion or that situation that was teaching you something. Because every experience we have, every emotion has something there for us to learn. Even if it's, I never want to be in this moment again, or I need to do something different so I can process this differently. Think about a strong emotion made it through, you'll make it through this. And just practice sitting with emotion and sitting with sensation and using our breath to do so. And if you need to ever adjust in any way because you're starting to feel pain in your body, please feel free to do so. Yin classes are about feeling sensation, which can be kind of on a scale of zero to 10, maybe at about a six, but we never wanna push ourselves to pain. So please don't push yourself to pain, but definitely maybe encourage you to challenge yourself. About halfway through this first posture. And if you have your hands on the mat during toes pose and you wanna kind of not focus as much on how the bottom of your feet feel, you can always turn your palms so that your um, fingers are pointing out to the sides of your mat or even back towards you and they'll add a wrist stretch into this. Sometimes it can be nice to focus on two different sensations so that we forget how many things there are in the bottom of our feet. So just spend about three more breaths here in this toes pose. If you were back on your heels and you want to try adding that wrist stretch in, go ahead and bring your palms back down onto the mat in front of you. And then when you feel complete, just come back up to hands and knees into a tabletop position. Slowly untuck your toes, flatten the tops of your feet down to the mat, and just pitter patter them on the mat, bringing some blood flow back into the feet in a different way, letting them readjust. And we'll flow through a couple cat cows before we move into our next pose, which will be saddle pose. So inhaling, looking up to the ceiling. Exhale, pressing your hands into the mat, spine up to the ceiling. Just do this two more times on your own. And then coming back to neutral, we're gonna move into saddle pose, which will be another pose that will be lying back. And so bringing your feet forward, knees together, sit back on your heels for just a moment and then spread your heels out to the side so that you can sit down between your feet. And for this pose, it can be helpful to have a cushion or a bolster. So if that's nearby, go ahead and bring that behind you. And you can bring it either direction, you can either have it perpendicular or sideways on your mat because we'll be lying back onto it or if you don't want that of course no need but it can be comfortable 
So once you find yourself sitting between your heels, go ahead and just place your hands on either side of your feet, palms down, and begin to just walk them backwards so that you have your knees bent underneath you and you're lying your upper body back onto the prop behind you. Maybe you come down onto elbows and forearms, and then maybe you're able to lie your entire upper back back onto that prop, or you can remove the prop if you would like to take it all the way to the floor. But again, any version of the pose is the pose. And the focus here is on opening up the front of our hips, front of our legs, and you'll definitely feel sensation across your knees. And so if as you feel this across your knees, you realize this is absolutely not for you, you might want to come back up and try one leg out at a time. So coming out slowly, even though we haven't been in very long. And just untucking one leg, stretching it out in front of you. And I'll let us know when we're halfway through so you can switch if you would like to. Or if you know that this won't work for your knees, you can just stretch both legs out in front of you and just lie back on your bol bolster, your prop, stretch your arms out to the side and just focus on more of a chest opener and just taking some deep breaths for a couple minutes. But wherever you are in this face up position, of saddle position, go ahead and see where, if you can take a deep breath, you can imagine filling up your belly filling up your lungs and filling up your chest and then slowly exhaling in that same way, exhaling out your chest, out your lungs and out your belly, just inflating and deflating the entire center part of our body. And your arms can be wherever is most comfortable. You'll notice if you stretch them out to the side or up over your head, that can add some other sensations to this posture. You can place one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. This can sometimes, if you find yourself being overwhelmed with anxiety or just experiencing a natural level of anxiety, this can calm yourself down. So you'll notice your heartbeat, notice your breath. And just come back to that anytime you need it in this class and any other time. Lots of things can change in life, but throughout our life, our breath will always be there even if sometimes it's deeper than others. And if you have one leg out in front of you, take two more breaths or so, slowly come up, switch out which leg is bent and which leg is straight, and then walk yourself back down. And take a couple more breaths in whatever position you're in. And then begin to place your arms back by your sides. Notice your elbows on the mat. Tuck your chin in. And press your elbows into the mat. Come up to forearms, keeping your chin tucked. And then come up to your palms. And slowly bring yourself back up to an upright position. And shift over to one side, just enough to bring your legs out from under yourself into a seated position. And our next pose we'll move into will be butterfly forward fold, continuing with focusing on our hips some, but then we'll add into our inner thighs. So bring your feet out in front of you, soles of your feet together. You can bring your feet as close or as far away from your body as you would like and as it's comfortable for you, adjusting it as you need. And just grab onto your ankles, and begin to just like bounce your legs up and down, imagining that your knees are butterfly wings. Just bouncing them up and down, noticing your legs, noticing your feet. And maybe you wanna try a couple cat cows here, inhaling and bringing your chest forward, looking up. Exhale, holding onto your ankles and dropping your head down. 
caving out the center of your body. And whenever you're ready, just take an inhale breath. It's a neutral spine. Look up to the ceiling. And then on an exhale breath, just begin to, with your hands still placed on your ankles, or you can adjust them to your mat if you would like, just begin to fold your body forward, noticing what it feels like in your hips. And then maybe you wanna place your hands out in front of you on the mat to kind of walk them forward. And when you're ready, feel free to drop your head around your spine. And wherever you are, see if you can just make sure that you are able to just fully drop your head and release your neck so that you can continue that idea of letting your head go, letting it rest and letting it hang. More than likely, you've been holding it up all day. Give it a break. And adjust your feet closer or farther away from your body to change this in any way that you would like that feels good for you and your knees and your hips. For some people, it's more of a stretch with your legs out. Some people, it's more in. Each of our bodies are different. And maybe you wanna come down onto your forearms. Or maybe you wanna place a prop on your legs and fold over that. Take whatever you need, fidget around in any way for the next breath or so, and then settle yourself in for the next couple minutes into this butterfly forward fold, curving inward, closing your eyes and coming back to your breath. And coming back maybe to thinking about that really strong emotion you felt over the last week. And thinking about your relationship with strong emotions. Is it easy for you to sit with them? If not, I encourage you to use this practice of yin yoga to notice that you are able to sit with strong physical sensation and how can you more easily sit with strong emotional sensation if it's challenging for you. If it's easy for you, notice how maybe sitting with strong physical sensation can be just as easy as sitting with strong emotional sensation. But either way, use your breath and just be here for the next couple of minutes. Just a little bit more here in this pose. See if on an exhale breath, you can allow yourself to sink just a little bit deeper for a couple more breaths. And then when you feel ready, press your hands into the mat. Begin to raise your head and slowly walk your hands into your body. Coming up just as slowly, if not slower than you came in. Unwinding your spine. Coming back up to neutral. And then just inhale and roll your shoulders up to your ears and back a couple times. Just reopening your chest. Moving in that opposite direction just a little bit. And then we'll move more in the opposite direction into fish pose, which you can do in a couple different ways. You can do it with the bolster behind you if you would like to, or if you have access to a block or two. I really like fish pose with blocks. And so you can leave your legs in butterfly if you'd like for this, or just bring them out in front of you or plant your feet on the ground, with your knees up to the ceiling. But to set up our blocks, we'll take both of them behind us. One of them will be underneath um, our upper back. One of them will catch our head and we can adjust the heights as we need to. But go ahead and shift those so that they're behind you. 
and then decide the easiest way I find to get into this pose is to have my knees planted or my feet planted, knees up to the ceiling. And similar to what we did with saddle pose from the seated position, we'll just plant our hands on either side of our body and slowly walk our upper body backwards so that the first block on its middle position maybe comes right underneath the back of our heart, right underneath our shoulder blades. And then our second block is there to catch our head. And you can adjust these in any way that feels good and acceptable for your body. Maybe you want to try around with raising the height of the, one of the blocks or lowering the height of the blocks, or you wanna just have a bolster underneath that so that it's across the back of your body. But adjust yourself in any way so that you feel this opening across your chest and you feel that that's maybe kind of popping the center of your back if that were to be a sensation. And then adjust the one underneath your head so that the back of your head could just rest. And from here, maybe you wanna bring your feet back into that butterfly shape or just stretch them out in front of you or leave them knees up to the ceiling. Take what you need. This is a very opposite pose from where we just were of an internal gaze. Now we're very much in a heart opening position, with our chest up to the ceiling. So decide where you'd like to place your hands. And for this pose, think about something from the last week that brought you a lot of joy, something that really filled your heart, something that made you smile in a way that maybe was a little bit more happiness or joy or a bigger smile than other experiences. And just spend some time being grateful for that experience, moment, person or accomplishment. Throughout the last little bit of time, we've had a lot of roller coasters in the world around us. And so it's, it's easy to focus on the hard parts of our week, but I wanna also make sure that we spend time focusing on the parts of our week and our days and our lives that bring us a lot of joy, even if they're fleeting moments. So just breathe into your body, breathe into the sense of gratitude for that experience and just be here for a couple minutes. Taking a few more breaths, noticing what a really big inhale can do to feel into that sensation across your back. And on an exhale, can you sink a little bit more deeply for just another moment or two? And then take an inhale breath. If you have your knees in butterfly or stretched out in front of you, just move your feet so that your feet are planted with your knees up to the ceiling. Press your elbows into the mat and lift up just enough so that you can bring the blocks or the props out from underneath you. And then lie yourself back on your back. We're gonna come into our twist in the middle of class tonight. So lie yourself back on your back, with your feet planted with your knees up to the ceiling. And just curl your knees into your chest, wrap your arms or your palms around your legs. 
Give yourself a hug and rock side to side for just a couple breaths. Feeling your full spine just flat back on the mat. Noticing what it feels like to rock side to side. Maybe you linger on one side for a breath or so. And then plant your feet back down on the mat. You're gonna come into supine twists with eagle legs. And so you can choose which side you'd like to go to first. Uh, so go ahead and just plant both of your feet. I'm gonna be shifting over to the left side first. So I'm planting my left foot, lifting up my right leg, crossing it over into just cross-legged eagle position. And then press that foot into the mat that's down on the mat, shift your hips a little bit over to the opposite side of the mat. So I shifted mine to the right side. Take an inhale breath. And then on an exhale, just drop your knees both to the left side of your mat if your right leg is crossed over them. And try and keep both shoulders planted on the mat with your chest facing up to the ceiling. And notice what this twist feels like already. Notice if you're feeling the sensation across your chest, across your back, across your IT band, or where you feel it in your body. Adjust in any way that you need to. Maybe you wanna curl in your knees a little bit more. Maybe you don't wanna cross your legs and you just wanna have your knees stacked, that's fine too. Just with your knees dropped to one side, decide if you'd like to place one hand on your knee and one hand on your chest or your rib cage, or both hands on your body or out to the side. And then see what a big inhale breath can do for deepening this twist a little bit more. Maybe you look over the shoulder that's opposite the direction your knees are in. And just settle into this twist. Think of this as kind of wringing out any stress from your day. Like we would wring out those last little drips of water from a washcloth. Just allow your spine to move in this way, using your own body, and your own breath. And you can always take an exhale through your mouth if you feel like you need to release some extra tension. Sometimes that can help us settle. Just come back to your breath. Come back to that happy place if you want to. And adjust your arm position if you would like to try something different. Maybe you add your arms out to the side and you like to curl in a little bit, placing your hands on your body or vice versa. Just put another minute on this side.
Taking that final breath on the side, inhaling and filling up. And exhale, twisting a little bit deeper, letting anything else go. And then if your legs are crossed, go ahead and uncross them, leave them dropped over to the side momentarily. And on your next inhale breath, use that and your core muscles to just bring your legs back up to the ceiling. Shift your hips back to the center. And then move the soles of your feet out to the edge of your mat and drop your knees in. Just letting your psoas muscle release, letting your knees be dropped together for just a breath or two. Placing your hands on your belly, feeling yourself take a big inhale into your belly, filling up as much as you can. Take an open mouth exhale, letting something go. Bring your feet back to the center. We'll be dropping our knees to the other side this time. So I'll be pressing my right foot into the mat, crossing my left leg over, then moving my hips a little bit to the left, inhaling and exhale, dropping them over to the right. And again, remembering that one side might be much easier than the other. One side might feel this more in your back than your hip or vice versa. Being gentle and kind with yourself. But also if you notice a huge difference from one side to the other, maybe asking yourself if there's anything that you need to adjust tomorrow so that your body can be stretched and used more symmetrically and you're not overburdening one side of your body or one set of muscles. Maybe it's nothing to do with that and you simply drove all day and that makes one leg used more than the other. But maybe you need to adjust how you sit if you're at a desk all day so that you don't accidentally overstretch or overburden one side of your body. Fidgeting around and adjusting as you need, but settling into this side, coming back to that breath, wringing out this side of your spine. Closing your eyes and coming back to maybe what you thought of at the beginning of places in your body with some extra tension, tightness, or discomfort. How can anything in this posture help relieve any of that? Make those adjustments and settle in. Taking your final few breaths on the side, letting your exhales ring out, sink any deeper that you need. And then when you're ready, uncross your legs, leaving them drop to the side for the exhale. And then inhale, bring your knees back up to the center, adjust your hips back to the center, and drop your feet out to the side, knees in. move your feet out to the side, drop your knees to the center, and take a breath or two. And then curl your knees into your chest and grab onto each side of your feet, bringing your feet out to the side into happy baby position. Just opening up your knees, opening up your hips, rock side to side, 
in this happy baby position. If you can't reach your feet tonight, maybe just grab onto your shins or the backs of your thighs. Just rocking on your back here before we shift into our next posture. And then curl your feet back in, curl your knees back in, and then start rolling forward to backwards so that you can roll yourself up into a seat. Once you find yourself in a seat, come onto your hands and knees back into tabletop position. And we're just gonna use downward dog as our transition into pigeon pose. And so go ahead and from this cat, from this tabletop position, once you finish any cat cows that you need, move your hands out in front of you, tuck your toes under, not for toes pose, don't worry. We're only doing that once. And then press into the mat, lift up your hips up to the sky, walk your feet to the back of your mat and come into downward dog with your hips up to the sky. And being in our first upside down position, maybe of the day, maybe of the week for you, just pedal out your dog, bending one knee at a time, shaking your head left and right, letting it go, stretching your hips up to the sky, sinking your heels down to the mat. And we'll move into pigeon position through three-legged dog and scorpion. So we'll move with our left leg planted first. Inhale, lift up your right leg to the sky into three-legged dog, stretching it out to the wall behind you. And then bend your knee and open up your hip to the sky, opening up into scorpion. Imagine that you're kicking, kicking your foot back towards your lower back. And then on an exhale breath, bring your knee through, bring it to your right wrist, dropping it down, dropping your left leg down behind you, inching it back with your toe tucked, untucking your toe if you'd like to. And then you still have your hands planted, adjusting to add any props underneath your hips you need for pigeon pose. Taking an inhale breath, looking up to the sky, with your spine really, really long. And then exhale, just walk your hands out, walk your hands down. And come down onto forearms. And then from here, just go ahead and drop your head down. Sink into the stretch along your right hip. Notice what it feels like on the front side of your left leg as well. And settle into this first side of pigeon pose. Coming back to the idea of really strong or really intense emotions. Oftentimes we can store emotions in our hips. And so if we are noticing a lot of tension in our hips, that might be a lot of emotional things that maybe we're experiencing or working through or have experienced that we're not ready to work through yet. And so I find that pigeon pose can be a posture that if I really focus on breathing deeply into any tightness or resistance I feel in my hips, it can unlock maybe some emotional things I've stored away. So if you're ever in this posture and you notice that that's happening for you and you feel those strong emotions, see if you can just be with them, let them come as they do. We're all in our own spaces. And so if that means that you need to cry that out or express emotion in some other type of way, feel free to do that. I always encourage people to journal after classes if they have strong emotions come up just because it's our body's way of beginning that release process, which can be a really healing and nourishing and challenging process. So do what you need, take what works for you, leave what doesn't, and just always come back to your breath in that happy place that we found ourselves in.
taking your final few breaths on the side, letting yourself drape your chest a little bit closer to the mat, sink a little bit deeper on an exhale. And then taking as long as you need, but when you're ready, coming back to your forearms, coming back to your palms, pressing them in, lengthening your spine again, looking up to the ceiling. Tuck your left toe underneath, press into the mat and slowly inch your knee forward enough so that you can press into the mat and return to that three-legged dog. Maybe return to that scorpion. Notice if it feels any different than it did the first time. And then place your right foot back down next to your left. Walk out your dog, pedal your knees, stretch your hips up to the sky anymore and then sink your heels down. Take what you need for a couple breaths if you'd like. Or head right into the other side, keeping your right foot planted, lift your left leg up to the ceiling. And three-legged dog, bend your knee towards your seat. Open up your left hip to the sky. Take another inhale breath and an exhale. Take one more inhale breath. And then on an exhale, bring your left knee forward towards your left wrist, dropping the right leg down this time, inching your toe back, untucking it, letting that leg be long. And then again, leaving your hands planted, look up to the ceiling, take an inhale breath, feel your full length of your spine. And then exhale, drape the chest down, coming down onto your forearms or your palms, or maybe your chest is all the way down onto the mat or a prop in front of you. And just let yourself be here, let it go. Coming back to any piece of the affirmations, sensations, or visualizations tonight that have really connected with you, or just being here in your body, being grateful for yourself for taking this time. Notice what your right hip feels like as it's feeling very open after being compressed on the other side. Just about another minute here on this side before we move into our next pose, which is our last one before Shavasana. So use your breath to let anything else release from your left hip or your right hip, depending on how this feels for you.
and then pressing your hands into the mat, your forearms, and then your hands coming back up, tucking that back toe underneath, taking an inhale, breath, stretching long, and then adjusting as you need to come back through three-legged dog, scorpion, into downward dog, taking what you need in this inversion. And then our next pose will be child's pose. And so when you're ready, go ahead and drop your knees down. You bring your knees together or bring your knees wide with your big toes together. And then sink your hips back towards your heels. Stretching your arms out in front of you, bringing your forehead down to the mat between your arms. Take a big inhale breath, fill up your upper back, fill up your belly as much as you can. Maybe you feel that feeling of filling up against your legs. And then in this position with your head down, see what an open mouth exhale feels like and if that can help you sink a little bit deeper. And just be here, our final posture before Shavasana. Letting everything else go. Letting yourself feel yourself fully curled in. Let it all soak in together. And settle. your final breath here in child's pose when you're ready you can move yourself into shavasana if you'd like to stay in child's pose for your shavasana feel free to do so but if you'd like to move go ahead and press your hands into your mat come back up to hands and knees and then adjust yourself so that you can come to lying flat on your back again you're welcome to stay in child's pose for the remainder of these next few minutes but if you're joining me in Shavasana on your back, just find yourself to your back, stretch your legs out long, stretch your arms maybe, take an inhale, stretching them up over your head to feel the full length of your body. Maybe you feel a little bit longer than you did an hour ago. And then on an exhale, just settle in, drop your hands to your side or place one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Nothing to do for the next three minutes. Nothing to focus on. 
just be here and let everything settle in, soak in and absorb. When I first began practicing yoga, I did not, didn't understand or appreciate the value of spending the last few minutes just lying on the mat. And over time, I began to realize that this was my way to transition from this time with myself back into time with the rest of the world. So let this time be just a few minutes more with just yourself, just your body and just your breath. Letting everything integrate, everything settle. And everything just be still before you have to move again. Shavasana. And before we move into our final adjustment to shift back up to seated, I want to just leave us with a quote. It's a lyric from a song written by my grandfather a long, long time ago. And it's a song called Higher Power. And that means different things to different people. But one of the lyrics is, when burdens seem to overcome, remember there's a higher power. And for each person that means something different, but I encourage you to think of your own breath as your own higher power. Anytime that you feel overwhelmed by strong emotions, take a breath, take a deep breath, fill yourself up with your breath, and just know that you can overcome whatever it is. You've made it through every other obstacle up until that one, more than likely you'll make it through that one. And then just exhale and let it be. So take an inhale breath, and on your exhale, bring your feet to the mat, curl your knees in, and roll over to one side, and then your own time, your own way, make yourself up to the seat, cross-legged, or in any way that makes sense for you. Eyes open or close, wiggle around, notice how you're coming back to where we started. And then if you'd like to take a final breath with me, place your hands anywhere that makes sense to you, you can bring your hands, palms together, hands over your heart. Take a big inhale breath. Breathe in your own secret superpower. And exhale. Let it all go. Let your shoulders drop. <sighs> Thanks for taking this time for yourself with me. It was great to meet you. This is our first time meeting in live class. And I'll be here for a few minutes if you need. <laughs>